One more time for your panel, your fireside chat. Take it away. Giants, Victor, thank you very much for joining us. Um, really appreciate you giving us your time. Um, just for the audience, you, may, you will have already noticed I'm from Scotland. So the intention is for me to do as little talking as possible because these guys are the interesting guys. So as we said earlier on, Expo 2020 was undeniably a huge success. So what the intention is for the next uh, 15 minutes is to talk about the digital marketing function that sat underneath that success and contributed heavily to it. And here we have two of the main contributors to that particular success. I'm really delighted to be able to have you guys here. So, um, Jad, if perhaps we could start with you. Pretty much everyone in the room, because we're mainly local, will be well familiar with what Expo 2020 is. From an insider's perspective, can you share what it was actually all about and perhaps some of the successes that you would like to talk about? Okay. So, uh, first, thank you for having me here. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we are in the midst of moving from Expo 2020 to Expo City Dubai. So I think it's a good point to be discussing what we've done on our platform previously and how we're moving forward. So uh, for the people that attended, you know what we've done. For the ones that didn't, an event that happened during a global pandemic in Dubai was a challenge that was raised and put on table prior to the pandemic of getting 23 to 25 million visitors. And massive number from a virtual visitation point of view that wasn't an, even an objective prior to the pandemic. Uh, jump forward, we postponed the event due to the pandemic a year, and then comes the point where we're opening up. And we were faced with a big dilemma, how we reach our customers, the ones that we've gained their email addresses, their contacts prior to the pandemic, and we're expecting to visit when we were due to open, and still target them and manage all that digital aspect of marketing while the world was even transitioning to a cookie-less uh, uh, situation. So all those questions happened while we were restructuring ourselves to open our doors. And that's where Telium, Telium <laughs> working with OMD, <laughs> came into play. We wanted a platform that can instantly, quickly, connect with everything that we are doing, easy to, co to manage, uh, will not take us ages to set up, and at the same time will deliver the results that we wanted. And this is how we ended up being together, working on this, delivering the 24.1 million visits, delivering over 240 million virtual visits. I mean, we 10x the physical visitations, and that was a phenomenal success. We were initially talking about an objective of 100 million or 150 million. And I think what makes all that easy for us is a clear mindset that was driven of, on keeping our KPIs simple. So we had one big objective, 24, 25 million, how we get to them, how many tickets we need to sell to make sure how many people will come from which country managing all the COVID sensitivities and making sure that people that are in Dubai will do repeat visitations to the amount that will get us those visits that we want. Great, thanks for that. And Victor, you, you have a slightly different perspective in this. What, what, what would your comments be? So I joined a week before the event started so, as people call it in the team, it right into the bloodbath. <laughs> but the, the biggest challenge of what Jad has explained also comes into marketing because uh, our approach that we plan on how we're going to attract people from different markets wouldn't work that smooth because we were, like, we were even clear if those uh, markets going to open up. So every campaign plan had to have a plan B and a plan C. In case the market opens, that's how we activate. In case it doesn't, this is what we're going to do afterwards. An important element uh, on the KPIs, right? A KPI of visit is quite hard to connect to any media metric. So we had to find proxies and work towards them in order to be able to understand if overall thing is 
achieved in the right way. So again, emphasis on technology, connectivity between the platforms uh, had to be seamless because we had uh, our focus on something else. We couldn't think about how we populate this audience, how we build that audience. It had to be all done automatically. Great. Now, you touched on it there a little bit, uh, but maybe you could speak to it a little bit more, Victor. Uh, COVID, right, made uh, for some real challenges. It was, you know, it required a certain kind of nimbleness that probably had never been thought of being required before. Can you, can you speak uh, a little bit to what that was like on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, what, did, what impact did that have to, 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 your, to your role? Um, it's to convince people to come. Everyone knew that it's a physical event, right? So to be able to run the marketing in the way that uh, it always talks about that, it always making sure that uh, there is a COVID safety in place and assuring like from, from already that first communication, we, uh, we had to be very clear about that. Um, but also I think from job perspective will be even uh, even more insightful on how how to manage the event right? how to manage people in there it was pretty interesting i mean we we, we start that we're not only communicating this in dubai our messaging is starting overseas in the countries that we're expecting the visits to come from and at the same time those countries themselves are going in a rapid way through a phase whereby either they're opening their airport or they're closing their airport. Either the flying uh, tunnels have a capacity of 100,000 or 20,000. And this is shifting on a daily basis. We would plan for a campaign, and I'm giving India as an example, that will uh, start in India in, on a specific date. The day before the campaign starts, India has a lockdown. Airports are closed. So automatically what we need to do, and this is where Victor is talking about the plan B, plan C. So we already planned all those campaigns. If this market shuts down, we move to this market. And the objective here is to reach X amount of people and to make sure we get X amount of tickets sold so that they will arrive here during this period of time before another market is opening. So we're working in real time, managing all that channel, making sure people from the airport, in the airlines, in the airport in Dubai, in the taxis, across all out of home, in their hotel, know how we're keeping this event safe for them to come and not to worry. I mean, play with how the markets are opening up, making sure all safety messages are there so people will really feel safe that, yeah, okay, you know what, I can get this ticket, go to Expo, I know they have all those safety measures taken care of, and I know I will be in an environment whereby I'll be able to feel as part of a big festival during COVID. Maybe I'll forget it's COVID. We'll have a bit of fun. An important note to add, because also what Expo created is something beautiful, I believe. It's Virtual Expo. So it was a 360 version of the site where you can experience pavilions and see even inside a 360 view. So the new KPI suddenly appeared, which is virtual visitation. So which means completely different plan on how to create that, how to make sure that people ex uh, explore the platform, watch the content, and try to, uh, uh, try to experience it even from the countries where they cannot travel. And there, when the lockdown happens, instantly we direct people to virtual expo. So if we lose them from having physical visitation, we gain them through having them on the platform that's virtual expo. So really real-time dynamic and, res and responding to things. What, what an amazing environment that you guys had to operate in. So th thanks for sharing that. Um, I just realized that when I turn my head this way, it gets louder. Um, OK. so. You mentioned earlier on that we're all together, well, we're here because of Telium. Um, can you share uh, a little bit about how you leveraged technology like Telium to achieve those kind of outcomes that you've just described? Okay, I can start and you can continue. Yeah. Okay, so um, we needed to solve three challenges. One is uh, to bring people in Expo, right? So, and the closest proxy was to sell tickets. Then the second one, which we realized after we started that, yes, a lot of people buying tickets, but they're not redeeming those. So we saw a big disconnect in terms of numbers of tickets sold. 
an actual visit. So we had to get that audience and activate them with completely different messaging. And there was even campaign designed for those who have a ticket but haven't come to participate in the contest, to explore pavilions, and to, and to win a car. <laughs> And the third one is very important from a budget perspective, how to be efficient, right? We were running campaigns across multiple, multiple markets, including UAE. So if you're a tourist and you come in here, you've been seeing one type of message and now you get another type of message. So it's important to avoid this overlap and avoid media waste because we, don't, we didn't want to uh, get a bad reputation for Expo, right? Because it's also a brand that uh, we were growing. So being able to use Tilium to exclude the audience simultaneously across multiple platforms because it's so well connected was one of the best things that, uh, that we used a lot. And that's how we made sure that there was still, obviously, a saturation, but it was at minimal level. And we were able to do that automatically. So the part where I said that we couldn't be bothered by creating this set of audience on every single platform, but we had to have one source automated, connected to all the platforms, and then if a consumer gets through a life cycle, I bought the ticket, then I visited, and this is my next step to do, that all these things are accounted for without our involvement. So preset. Yeah, I think it's important that from the first minute before we knew we were going to use Telium, we knew what we wanted. We knew what we wanted that platform to do, and we knew how we we're going to be working together on achieving our objectives. So we wanted a platform that will work in that seamless manner, deliver the objectives that we had, tick those boxes that we really wanted them to happen. And then when we went through the phase of identifying platform, we realized Telium ticked all the boxes we wanted, and enabled us to work in that way. And I think this was uh, the most important part, what happened before identifying that platform. Sometimes we all go through picking platforms without making sure we really know exactly what we want from them. Very important point. I mean, and that also um, speaks to time to value as well. Putting that extra thought in at the beginning allows you to go and execute faster as well. Excellent. So I'm just keeping an eye on the time here. Um, Obviously, a, an extremely unique um, experience, an extremely unique environment, not just the event, but the COVID impact on it as well. So how would you summarize what, what your learnings were from that unique experience? Uh, perhaps you, um, Jad, uh, could share that. Look, few people know how big of a marketing machine we had running at that time. And I think what allowed it to run smoothly is one, we were all empowered. We all had clear briefs. We knew what is expected from each and every one of us. We had a great relationship with our partners and we had lots of partners, but it was fully transparent, fully clear, seamless communication. We discussed things on daily basis we, because we had to take action on daily basis, right? So it's not like we could have delayed it. We had an event that's running for six months. In those six months, we had to achieve everything we wanted. So one, empowerment. Two, trust your gut. If you have your job done right in the beginning, you will not go wrong. Three, trust your colleagues. Trust that they will deliver on what they committed. And we are proof of that. Everybody delivered. I mean, everybody delivered in UAE, in Dubai, in the globe. And uh, I think that's it. And Victor? So from my perspective, very important was the correct setup because we effectively increased team three times during the course of Expo because of all the, uh, all the challenges that we faced. So it was very important to have a right skill set, collaborating with the right skill set at, uh, at every single level. So our team was integrated in Expo offices working with the right counterparts. Uh, to, get the, to get the things rolling faster. And then obviously the, decision, the decisions were made with the same brief for everyone. So it's seamless communication. The, um, have always a plan B or fallback plan because nothing goes as per plan, <laughs> especially for event management and um, make sure that the teams are integrated. 
Excellent, thank you. So I think according to the clock, we've got about 20 seconds left. We've nearly managed to complete a fireside chat without a fire, <laughs> which is, uh, I never know why they're called fireside chats. Uh, um, any questions from the audience that you would like to direct to Jad or Victor while, while they have your full attention? Because, uh, by the way, if there is, my eyesight's terrible and I can't see you, so I'll need some help. <laughs> no questions? Okay. No questions, I think, and also the time, sadly, is up. But please, Victor, Jad, and Al, make some noise for the guys. Thank you for not setting fire to the stage. We appreciate that, but more on that in just a second.